It is Cedric once said, I want to reach people and express myself. You have to put up with the risk of being misunderstood if you're going to try to communicate. You have to put up with people projecting their own ideas, attitudes, misunderstanding you. But it's worth being a public fool if that's all you can be in order to communicate yourself. I deeply resonated with this quote and what she says in it. Ever since I can recall, I've been quite cognizant in my experiences of the element of perception that occurs when you communicate. How you can speak, but the ears that hear you are only primed with the understanding of the person that is listening of the conceptions of the world that they possess. How, whenever you communicate, the meaning and the essence of what you're communicating will change. How it becomes something else. Edie was a figure of the 60s whose image has been immortalized beyond Andy Warhol's Silver Factory. The iconic girl that enchanted others by merely being herself and the one who would embody as well as birth the phrase 15 minutes of fame into the scene. I can make a separate video on her alone, but it suffices to say for this recording that I became infatuated by her or with her in my early teens. It was at the time a figure or model of interest that transported me into a different era than the depressive stage I was living in. So I consumed as much information and visual data on her as I got hold of. We could reduce Edie to the title of a pretty socialite slash trendsetter with an unusual upbringing that made it almost impossible for her to really fit in. But, by the same token, a glimmering star fervently standing out, surrounded by negative space, too far away from other burning bodies alike to relate. I like the self-awareness that peeks through in Edie's quote. It shows a good understanding of how the world operates almost as a moving picture she observed from the fourth wall. This notion of separateness alludes to the individuality of us all, how no matter if we are looking at the same thing from the same angle, it will never really be us looking from the same point. Not only from a physical perspective, but also from a mental level. The understanding of how our minds are equipped with a bunch of notions we've processed and the experience we have of the world and how that will shape our future perceptions. I think this is why I've always been intrigued with um, understanding other people's views and perceptions and sort of accumulating other people's points of view to kind of piece together the image of the whole. Knowing that my perspective of something is not the entirety of the truth or the entirety of reality. And wanting to absorb as much info as I can, not only to understand the external reality, but also to understand people. What makes people think or feel a certain way. I think this kind of way of perceiving things and people is sometimes not helpful. There is a lot of forgiveness that can come from understanding, but one has to be careful not to allow this understanding to excuse others' harmful behavior to the extent this understanding becomes harmful to yourself. Still, there's beauty in understanding that comes from the feeling of freedom it provides for the self. 
realizing the perception someone may have of their world or the lack of understanding of themselves may drive them to do things onto others, to become harmful or hurtful. See, this is why sometimes I get this feeling that life on earth is kind of like living in a madhouse because we all walk around perceiving our own reality and pretending that everyone else exists in the same reality we do which is not truly the case we all live individualized realities and try to share a common ground and that's sort of mad in itself and this is what happens also when we communicate we express ourselves and think or hope people understand us but what drives me mad is knowing people won't quite get the entirety of what I'm saying. There is a method of analytical psychology that specializes in researching and understanding discourse, which essentially is analyzing the elements at play in communication. How people use discourse with different aims and purposes and how this can tell us a lot about the way we shape our realities or the realities we project or share. Pretty much how we make sense of the world and give meaning to our shared realities. Having lived in different countries, speaking different languages or dialects, aside from my natal one, it makes sense that I would pick up on some of these things. See, being an outsider, many times, makes you grow. It makes you aware of other ways of thinking, to adapt in order to connect, to find common ground. And though in some ways it makes you able to adapt and relate to many, this effort may not always be both ways. You may find people committed to misunderstanding you. There is something that happens when people's views of reality are challenged. They tend to lash out, become aggressive, or passive-aggressive towards the opposing notion. This is an attempt to control, to hold on to what they have conceptualized as facts within their life experience. And suffice it to note that the challenge may just be a different truth of one thing, not necessarily a sought-out argument of the real nature of the thing itself. Understanding that people see you as they see their world, or are only capable of understanding you with the only tools in their reach to understanding themselves and others, is a step toward peeling back the veils of perception. People hate what they don't understand. People also hate what they can't control. It's for this reason that it's important to become cognizant of these things in order to let go of control of the outside or attempts of control of the outside because we can only control what's inside. I encourage you to think outside of yourself when receiving information. I also encourage you to try and not overthink how others may perceive you to the extent that it stops you from expressing parts of you that are here to be shared.